So we, we basically had two, two main goals for our session this morning. One was to give you a sense of what the findings were of the U.S. country review, and then secondly, through the panels and Q&A sessions, engage you in um, creating as broad a perspective as possible on what that strategic pursuit of quality uh, uh, and coherence uh, and uh, transparency might look like. Uh, I, think, I think we have accomplished that. I think through the panels we have uh, developed a much deeper understanding of the problems. I think we've defined them be even better than, than the way that they were already articulated in, 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 in the report by bringing in your experiences and, and your perspectives. Um, and I think there were lots of uh, possible solutions that were actually generated through, through many of the panels. Um, wanted to just uh, t pick two, two points uh, to, to suggest some possible next steps around this. One is a, a point that my colleague uh, Kay made, and she said that time is getting really short. Time is getting very short to begin to look at these issues. And, and I, think, I think that's an important point to keep in mind, particularly if we link it to uh, a, a point that Tony made just, uh, just a few minutes ago where he said, you know, transparency is actually the way into the broader conversation uh, around these issues of, of quality and coherence. So clearly, all, all the right stakeholders uh, who, who, who need to be part of the solution were here today. And uh, I think today the conversation just started. So I, I hope that uh, collectively, or as uh, Marlene said, uh, using uh, our combined responsibilities, that we can actually get to a, a, a next level of conversation, which would be more around very, very specific actions that collectively we might want to pursue. Again, um, I said it, uh, people make, uh, make things happen, and uh, it wouldn't be, uh, we wouldn't be here today, be able to have this conversation if it wouldn't have been for the great work that Simon and Margaret Zotta have done and their thoughtful analysis and Deborah, who is our partner and who has uh, provided leadership around this work, but also some of the other OECD staff, uh, Susan Friday and Jennifer Cannon, who, who really were, were critical and instrumental in making this uh, event uh, successful. Kevin Carey and Amy Leitman from the um, New America Foundation need, need to be thanked for seizing the opportunity to shine a light on these very important issues. And I think, uh, Amy and Kevin, that you pulled together an amazing group of uh, moderators and, and panelists and organized such an excellent uh, discussion. Also, I want to thank all the New America Foundation people who did the logistical support. Um, Eliza French, uh, Lindsay Tippy, and John Williams. And I want to thank our uh, moderators, Amy, Kevin, and Travis, and all, all of the excellent uh, panelists. Uh, we, we appreciate that all of them took the time out of their busy schedules to, to be here with us today and share their perspectives. I also need to thank my partners at the National Center for Education Statistics, who did a lot of work uh, in the background to, to make this U.S. country review uh, successful. Uh, Sharon Boyven, uh, Lisa Hudson, and Tom Wico for their partnership on this project. And I need to uh, uh, give a special shout out to two of my, uh, my colleagues, uh, Kay uh, Gilcher, for sharing her expertise in the area of accreditation, but also to Mary Alice McCarthy, who actually coordinated uh, the entire review here in the US uh, for the OECD team. And there are uh, four people uh, uh, at the, who were part of the uh, state teams that helped uh, uh, help facilitate uh, the case studies of the states. Amy Alby and uh, Kathleen Taylor from Florida, Lynn Gilley from Maryland, and Brian Wilson from Washington. And with that, Amy, 